So I have a quilt that needs to be layered and I'm trying an experiment to see if this works better than the method I usually use. I'll be quite honest about it. This is the part of quilting I hate the most is layering the quilt because there never seems to be an area big enough to put it out on. Now, underneath this table, I'll explain this in a minute, there's this carpet. And this is the biggest area in my house that I can lay something down on. I found though that this carpet on top of a carpet has a tendency to bunch up and it creates wrinkles in my quilt back. So to solve that problem, I'd roll up this carpet and then I'd have the wall to wall carpeting and I'd lay it on there and that worked a little better. Now, if I taped down with painter's tape, the corners of the background fabric before I laid down the other two layers right on the carpet, that helped keep it um, straight as well but it was still a pain in the butt because I had to get down on my hands and knees and you know you get to a certain age where getting down isn't so hard it's getting back up so I've been racking my brain as to where else in the house I could layer my quilt I do have a hardwood floor upstairs in my house up in my main floor but I would have to move furniture all over the place to find an area big enough to lay down a quilt for layering so that's not really an option I have these collapsible tables. Now, I use a lot of collapsible tables. Um, in fact, my sewing room is actually collapsible tables, uh, but they're permanently up, meaning that I have designed it in such a way that I just cannot take them apart and use those. But these are the ones I've had left over. One's a really long one, a six foot table, and the other two are uh, four foot tables. And so I've put them out in this configuration. Now you'll notice there's some cardboard and an old cutting mat laid down here. I'll take you around to this side of it. That I have actually taped to the top between these two smaller tables. The reason being is I'm making a bridge because you can see I'm one table short. Now, if what I do today actually works out well, I will invest in another one of these collapsible tables and I won't have to do this bridge thing in between. But right now, it's a makeshift kind of thing to see if this experiment is going to work or not. And I taped it down with some clear tape just to keep them in place. So now I have a working area that can accommodate, if it doesn't hang over the edges, a quilt that's about, um, what did I figure out here? 70, 78 inches down that way. And let's see, that's uh, 72 and 72 the other way. So the quilt I'm working on today is slightly longer than, well, it's about 79 by about 57. So I'm gonna see how this is gonna work out and I'll show you what I do as I do it step by step. Okay, let's start with my background fabric. Now, I've already rough cut this, so there should be more of it here than quilt, because I want more here than a quilt. And this is wide back. So wide back's uh, 108 inches. I don't like piecing backings, although I have done it. And so I'm laying it out here. I still have the salvages on it, but that's okay because, I, as I said, I cut it bigger. Now, right off the bat, you see, I could use another table down at this end. Maybe I should invest in another, maybe two tables. But as far as width is concerned, it's not too bad. A little bit of hangover. see some spots here they're going to give me some trouble they need to be ironed out and that's the other problem I have I do not have a big enough ironing board for this but maybe I have so let me think about this for a second and then I'll be back okay so I'm in my sewing room and when I designed my sewing room I uh, took this huge piece of wood that's under here and I covered it uh, and to make it into a pressing mat. And although usually my cutting mat sits on here and a wool mat over there, in this case, I've taken the 
cutting mat off because you should never iron on your cutting mat. Uh, ask me how I know. And uh, took off the wool mat. Now I have this area which is almost as long as my background. So I take my new super duper iron and I'm going to iron this. Now I have to say that I do not usually iron my back backing fabric and that's a bad that's a mistake. Um, you really should because that's how you get wrinkles. I don't think my cord's long enough to get some of the kinks out of it. Just got this iron, so I'm still trying to get used to it. Okay, and then what I think I'm going to do, for the sake of room, because I have no place to drape it over the back, I'm just going to sort of roll it, just to try and keep wrinkles out of the parts that I have already ironed. Pull it up. Straighten it out. This is why having a long arm machine would be really nice, just for this part alone, the layering. But you know, I don't have one, so you gotta make do with what you've got and you gotta be inventive. And that's what I'm being today. Oops, pull my tank off. I don't know if this cord wants to coil. I guess that may come out over time. Okay, let's... You know, I just need about one foot more <laughs> on here. Now, of course, I told you the size of this. This is the size of about a twin. So anything bigger than that, then I'm not sure what I would do. Well, essentially, I'd probably do the same thing because wouldn't the dimensions, it would just be longer this way, not wider? Hmm, I don't know. I can tell you that I love this new iron. The steam in it is just wonderful. Only thing I'm not loving right now is the cord doing its little kinky thing. Okay, so you get the idea. So I'm gonna carry on with this and then I'll go back to the table. So I got thinking, as I'm doing this, maybe just to give the, the fabric a little bit more stability, I should maybe use a little bit best press on this. I don't know if this is a good practice or not, but I'm going to try it. So I'm using Mary Allen's best press. And I'm being pretty generous. Okay, so I'll carry on here. Okay, so I'm back out here on my tables and I'm just going to roll the backing 
back out. You know, you need arms that are like twice as long as they are for this kind of work. Center battery will collapse right through it. That's why I need more tables. Okay, let's pull it down a little bit from this end. better than it was before, now that I have pressed it. Okay, so now we've got that, now we've got to lay our batting on top of it, so let me get my batting. Okay, so I've laid out my batting. This was a pre-cut piece of batting that measures about 72 by 90, so it should be big enough for this quilt. It's a Hobbs batting, an 80-20, I believe. Um, the one thing I don't like about batting is how it sticks and it will gather up your fabric underneath. Now maybe that's just me, but I'm going around and I'm trying to smooth it out a little bit more. Now I could probably have tried to iron this, but you want to know something? I've tried that in the past and it doesn't really help, at least I didn't think it does. Because by the time you get a big piece of this ironed out, um, it's got lumps in other spots. So you just try to get most of the lumps out the best you can. Now the stuff, this stuff too stretches, I have found, and you don't really want it to stretch because when it stretches, it gets thin in certain spots. And then that's another whole set of problems I have found. Okay, that's I think about as best as I'm gonna get it. So, now it's to put my quilt top on top of this. Let me grab the quilt top. Oops, quilt top's out here already. Now you're gonna say, well, don't you pin or baste? Yes, I baste, I do not pin. I have never pinned, uh, mainly because I know some people swear that pinning is your best bet but I like the spray basting, but I haven't done any spray basting yet. I'm just going to get this laid out here. Now you see I've got plenty around the edges and at the top and the bottom and I want that because you always want to leave a little bit more than the size of your quilt top because when you two quilt it, it does shrink, pulls a little bit. So I'll just try to get the top squared. Come a little bit more this way, I think. You know, when you're layering, it always reminds me of those old felt boards they used to have in school. You know, the felt men and animals and things you used to stick on them. Because that's what this is like. Everything sticks to it. Of course, it sticks to it when you don't want it to, and when you do want it to, it doesn't. As I said, this is my least favorite thing to do in terms of quilting. But if you spend the time, I have found from experience, doing what I'm doing right now, getting as many of the puckers out, then when you quilt it, you will have less puckers. <laughs> okay, I think I'm just about there. It's going off the ends a little bit here, so yeah, I definitely need to invest in a couple more tables. I keep forgetting about that center part not being very stable. Now, I saw a video where a lady showed you how to do any size quilt 
uh, like this on a card table. And I tried that method, and it sort of works, but you want to know something? It didn't work well enough for me to do it again. So, I will say at this stage, cautiously, I'm kind of like doing it this way because my back is not killing me now, because I'm not crawling around on the floor. Okay, so, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, roll the batting and the quilt top up together about halfway so I can do my spray basting. So I just roll these two layers up, smooth out the batting, or not the batting, but the batting. grab my spray basting. And I'm just using 505. Now a lot of people don't like to do this indoors. Uh, I have not found it a problem is, is in terms of fumes, at least not from the 505. Okay, I just sprayed one section of it. Let me just do it section by section. Having a little pucker problem. So I find if I can Grab the quilt like this, the roll. I can smooth out the top and the batting, a little bit more so. Okay, next section. problem right here, I gotta work out. Now right now I'm more concerned about the batting part because I will be rolling back the top and basting it after I get the batting part all done. Now you might ask why am I doing two layers on top of the backing fabric at the same time even though I'm only uh, spray basting down the batting onto the backing right now. Well I find it, it just gives me a little bit more to work with, like in terms of flattening it down. So now I'm just going to roll this part up. See, I've got a problem up here. So I'm just going to try and get that wrinkle out. And spray base this. And you can see the reason I only do half at a time is because I can't reach any further than that.
Now here I'm being a little bit more careful because I don't want any tucks in my top. section at a time. find that makes it a little bit more manageable. It's a bit of a workout though. I'm starting to sweat. This is the part that people who aren't quilters have no concept about. How much effort you put into doing this. Now I have this overhang here that's really not based it down, but I will base that after I do the other half uh, when I'm able to pull the whole quilt a little bit further up so I can get that. But that's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna do the top end and then I'll be back. Okay, so I have it all spray basted it down and I've got it as flat as I think I can get it. Now, it would be nice probably to be able to press this, um, but I can't on this table. I mean, I could, I would have to take um, a pressing mat and go step by step and I just don't have the facility for that. So I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, I think it's smoothed out pretty good. And uh, I'll just hold this up so you can see. Let's bring you around here. So yeah, it's pretty much smoothed out pretty good and based it down. So now I'm gonna put you back down. So I have excess uh, backing and batting and I don't want that much because you're gonna see why in a minute, but I wanna cut this off. Now I could take a cutting mat, put it underneath but things are a little uneven here. I think I'm just going to wing it with my scissors. And from the border of the quilt itself, I think I'm just going to go out about one and a half or two inches. It's not going to be the straightest cut in the world, but that doesn't matter because eventually this is going to be removed from the quilt. So I'm just going to go all the way around about, as I said, about an inch, inch and a half beyond the outside border of the quilt. And I'm cutting the backing fabric as well as the um, batting at the same time. Now something I'm gonna say right now, this being the first time I've done this in this setup, cutting, seems to be a lot easier than when I have it laying on the floor. So I'm liking that. Okay, so I'm gonna have to pull the quilt down a little bit to get that last little bit. There we go. And you probably can't see what I'm doing at this end. So, so essentially I'm just going to carry on. I'm gonna go all the way around the quilt and I'll be back. Okay, so I've trimmed all the way around my quilt and I've left about an inch, inch and a half of backing fabric and batting hanging out over the edge of the outside border. And I'm just giving another little smooth down. And now what I want to do is before this goes back into my sewing room so I can quilt it, I have these little green clips. Oh, they're big green clips and I love these. Um, I think they're by Clover, I'm not sure. I probably got them off Amazon. They might not be original Clover, but they work just fine. They work very much like the little, smaller Wonder Clips. These are just bigger style. And I like to go around and clip the layers all together using these. I used to baste all the way around the outside of the quilt, and then somebody told me that's not such a good idea, but I ignored them. And then I found, yeah, the reason you don't is because if you're starting near the center of your quilt for the quilting, things get squished out onto the edge. And so when you get out here, you've got a bulge. Um, so I don't do that anymore. I just use these clips and they can come off when I'm done with them. And they're just long enough. If I cut about an inch, inch and a half, uh, like I said, 
around uh, out from the outside border just to hold everything down. And what I usually do is I space them out and I go from one side to the other side, then from top to bottom, and then I fill in the spaces with as many clips as I possibly can. I don't think you can overclip your quilt. And I'm starting in the middle of each section or each end or side, but I don't think that really matters. That's just me. I'm probably OCD or something. I don't know. Now we gotta get up to the other end, but I need to pull the quilt. Oops, dropped a few of my clips. So we'll go up to this end. And then I start filling in in the in-between spots until I run out of clips. And I need to pull this up this way to get to the other end. So yes, another table at the other end would definitely be an asset. some more in. I really like these. I should get some more of them. I don't think you can have too many of these larger clips. I find them very handy. some a little closer to the corner areas because I find sometimes the corner areas do peel up because for some reason you don't get enough basting spray on those on those edges okay I'm done let me bring you up so you can see oops sorry if I made you sick Okay, here we go. You know, it would be easier if I took you off the tripod. Give me a okay. second. Okay, so I've got my whole quilt sandwich all done. You can see my little green clips all the way around. And for most part, there doesn't seem to be any real major bumps or bulges in this, which is good. So it's all ready to go. I can put it in my sewing machine and start the basting. So I do like this method of doing it. It worked out pretty good. My back isn't sore. I'm not crawling on the floor. Um, I had a relatively smooth surface to work on, so that helped. Um, I do need to invest in a couple of more tables to make this work area a little bigger. And since these tables do collapse, I do have an area in my laundry room where I store them. So that's not a problem. So that took me, let's see, that took me just over an hour. To, to do this and uh, it's done. And as I said, this is the part I hate the most, but using this method that I've done, mm, not hating it quite as much. I will never love layering a quilt though. So I hope this gives you some ideas uh, to what you can do and uh, in the space that you may have. And we'll see you again for the next episode. Oops, sorry, hit the camera. The ep next episode of The Idiot Quilter. Okay, just a little added note. When I got my quilt into my sewing room and was rolling it up, I noticed I had a cup, a major pucker in the back, in the um, backing fabric. Uh, I think it was caused because I had that uneven part that I sort of make, 
makeshift it to, to the tables and that created that. So I thought, what can I do? So I tried to work it out and I got out my iron and I basically steamed it out. In fact, what I ended up doing was I did steam the whole back of the quilt sandwich and that got rid of any of the other little wrinkles. So I guess you can iron it uh, and it just helps to get rid of those marks. So hope you enjoyed that. Talk to you later.